Welcome to vbteacher.com and our first introductory project in programming in Visual Basic using Visual Studio. Uh, we're going to be starting off with a breakout program which is kind of a classic program from the early days of computers. It's a simple kind of an application and uh, we'll simply start you off programming right away and we'll figure out how to make it all work as we go. I hope you have fun with this project and uh, look forward to working with you. Thank you. Teacher.com website and welcome to the project entitled Breakout. In this uh, project we're going to be teaching you how to get started in Visual Basic programming and we're going to do it in, uh, in a fun way. We're going we're to teach you how to program video games. I've got a f series of video games I'm interested in showing you how to play including things like Breakout, Tetris, Lunar Lander, and a number of others that are out there. Uh, just If you can imagine it, we can just about do it in Visual Basic. Uh, you need to get your hands on a copy of Visual Studio, Visual Studio containing Visual Basic. Uh, it comes in several varieties and some of them are free on the Microsoft website. Uh, you can do this on the uh, free VB um, Express and uh, or you can do C Sharp but uh, we're teaching this particular course in Visual Basic instead of C Sharp. Um, Visual Studio 2008 is out there and you can get uh, the beta version of VB 2010 at the current time and I'm sure by the time this comes out you'll be able to get lots of different varieties of Visual Basic 2010. So we're just going to fly right into this and start programming it. No pr previous knowledge is really necessary. Just get a copy of Visual Studio and start programming with us and you should be able to make your programs work along with us. And here we go. Uh, when you run Visual Studio 2008 or whatever variety you have, you come up with a uh, with a, a page that can is like a web page, and it's connected to the web in a number of different ways. And uh, but really, you don't really have to have that. It gives you some options on here on how to get started. But actually, you can immediately skip over that and just start programming. I'll, I'm just going to close this greeting page and to go ahead and write to the program. Uh, the first thing you need to do is decide that you're going to create a uh, Windows uh, Windows application and so we're going to say new project and uh, when it comes up we have this dialog box and there's a lot of different types of projects in Visual Studio and one of those is the very first one and the very first option Windows Forms application and that's what we're going to do and we're going to call it breakout and we're going to let it save in my my documents folder Visual Studio 2008 projects and it'll be in a folder called breakout after a moment it'll come up with a, a blank form like this and we're off and running. Uh, we can make our form a little bigger. Games usually don't have those little tiny windows. And uh, what you can do next is to change the appearance just a little bit. Uh, at the top is a little toolbar containing a series of uh, icons and these open windows for you to access some of the tools in the uh, Visual Studio bag of tricks. Um, the first of these is called the uh, Solution Explorer and that shows you a copy of all the files you have in your project. And the second of these is the one I want here and that's the Properties window. And when I open the Properties window I can set certain things about the uh, form that I just created including things like the name of the form, the text which we'll call Breakout. And we can also do the um, give it a name if we want. We can set the background color. Let's give this a decidedly dark look and make it have a black background. Okay. Alright, so there's a couple of properties of that. Now let's um, go back up to the toolbar and uh, Solution Explorer hasn't changed any and the properties window is still there but this time we're going to pull up the toolbox. These are some uh, things you can drag and drop onto your projects and immediately have some function. I'm going to click the toolbox and I'm going to find in the common controls list there's a thing called button and we're simply going to put that button on our screen. We don't need it to be too large and I just dragged, I held the left button down and dragged a rectangle there and now we're done temporarily with our toolbox and I'm going to pu pull up my properties window again up here on the toolbar and I'm going to 
delete the text off of this button because this is actually going to be my ball for my breakout game and uh, we're going to go down below and we're going to rename this thing ball so the name of this project name of this control is ball and it's a button and later on we may take the ball and turn it into something a little different than a button you don't need this to be terribly large it can be quite small and the width and the height now are well about the same let's make them both 24 and so we have the width and height is 24 uh, we can go up and change the color of the ball if we'd like uh, we can change the back color to something uh, a little more visual than what we have here let's go with a red ball and that's now what it looks like that thing's going to be moving around on the screen all right, so we have a form with a black background, and we have a ball with the name ball and a caption, a text that's empty, and uh, that's what we have so far. Now we need to um, go over here to the uh, toolbox again. In order to animate things, one of the nice features of Visual Studio is a thing called a timer control. And uh, you may have to hunt a little bit for that. I, I happen to remember that it's in the uh, components section. Almost everything is under the all Windows forms container anyway. So down here is a timer. And uh, just give that a double click and it will show up in this area down at the bottom of the project. And from there we can uh, access it and we can program that. Now we have a button on the screen and we have a timer control and let me explain what the timer control does uh, let me set a couple of properties first I'm gonna right click on the timer control and set some properties and I'm gonna set enabled to true so the but uh, the timer will be on when I run the program and the interval will be well, let's make it 50 milliseconds uh, the units on interval are milliseconds or thousandths and so this interval here is 1 20th of a second 50 milliseconds now the way this works is that there are, there are some events every time this timer uh, gets down to zero it triggers something called a timer tick and the timer tick is a place you can go in and I just double clicked the timer and it went into the code area now this is where we can write programming code and the code area now has a routine called timer one tick and timer one tick is an event handler now if you go out to the right hand side of this top line right here the header line on the sub you'll find that there's a thing on the end that it says it handles timer one tick that gives you the clue those things will only come up when an event has happened and in this case it's the timer getting down to zero so the timer runs from 50 milliseconds down to zero and it triggers an event and it makes your program jump to here and then it starts counting down immediately again from 50 milliseconds down to zero and so every 20th of a second it comes back here and does something else if we tell it to change the location somehow of the uh, of the ball that's on the screen then it will start the ball moving and let's do that the name of our ball is ball and we're going to tell it to take the left coordinate and to read it and then add to it a uh, the number one and uh, adding one to the left coordinate moves the ball to the right Okay. Now, when you're uh, when you've made a change in code or changed your project, if you want to see what it looks like, then uh, what you do is you come up here to one of the toolbars, or you can go to the uh, you can go to the the debug window, and there's a start debugging F5. You can press the F5 key, or you can press one of these. I usually use these buttons here. These are the run buttons, and now we'll run it and see what it does. And we can see then that we have our ball. That Welcome to vbteacher.com and right. our first introductory project in programming timer, in Visual Basic using Visual Studio. One pixel uh, we're going to be starting to off right. with a breakout program, which is, which is kind of a classic pixels, program from the early days of computers. A it's a simple kind of an application, and, it does. and uh, we'll simply and you start you off programming right away, and we'll figure out how to make it all work as we go. The property from I hope you have fun with this project, and look forward to working with you. Try 50 down. Thank you. And we see it scooting off to the right. Pretty good, pretty good clip. All right. Now we can also change the y coordinates by changing the top. And let's go back to one. And ball dot top plus equals one. This, now it's going to move down into the right. So let's start it in the upper left corner so it can move down into the right and check it out. And here it comes again, down into the right. And because we're changing both the top and the left each time that the timer tick goes off it moves down and to the right. Now that's all well and good except for the fact that uh, 
we can't ever change the motion it's going to go forever down and to the right in order for us to have the ability to change the direction of the ball we need to use a variable there so let's go up to the top of the program now and uh, add a, a variable for the how fast it moves or how far it moves on each run so let's do dim v speed as single equals a 1 dim h speed as single equals 1 and now down here instead of adding 1 each time we're going to add to the left h speed horizontal speed so it moves to the left or right and the vertical speed here and that can be changed as we go through the program so now you're not going to see anything change here but we do have a variable now where we had a had a constant value before and now when it gets to the corner we can actually program it to hit the edges and bounce around and that's what we'll do here before we quit okay so now we'd like to uh, get to get this thing moving uh, uh, bouncing off the sides and let's start with the easy sides the top and the left and we're gonna so we just move the ball so it moves up and to the left so let's start it down like about here it's gonna go up and hit the top and then come over and hit the side and then come back down if we do our do this right and we have to do those checks we should do those before we move the ball so check the uh, top of the screen and the way we do that is with an if-then statement uh, we check to see if, if the uh, ball is at the top of the screen and if it is we change the vertical speed to a positive value so if ball top is less than zero then v speed equals okay you look up the old value and take the negative of it and so what this does v speed equals minus v speed simply changes the direction of the ball same thing on the left side check the left of the screen if the ball left is less than zero then h speed equals minus h speed and that'll take the check the left side let's see if that runs bang bang of course on the bottom and right it's not programmed yet so it will just go on forever go off the screen and disappear now we do need to uh, uh, understand a little bit more about this um, let's go ahead and add the code for the bottom of the screen check the bottom if the ball bottom okay, there's a variable for the bottom of the ball is greater than the screen bottom but actually we can't use that because the screen if you look at each window it has some borders on it and there's an inside portion of the screen and then there's an outside portion of the forms and actually what we'd like to use is that in, inner portion the work area inside the center of the form and uh, that is not simply the form width that is something a little different the ball bottom is greater than then um, me dot client rectangle is that area inside the form height then we switch the vertical speed again and then the top of the ball check check the right side of the screen if the ball right is greater than me dot client rectangle width then h speed equals minus h speed okay so there's that and we have all four sides now the ball should freely bounce around on, on the inside of the screen let's see if it does get it moving around the screen a little bit we don't have it moving horribly terribly fast but it's moving pretty good and there it bounces off the inside edges of the right and the bottom of the screen and comes back around again and it'll it'll do this all day long without ever getting tired so there we have the first uh, little piece of our program done this ball has to bounce off the sides and the top and the bottom of the screen in order to be playable and we've seen that we can make these things animate fairly quickly so want to take a few minutes and uh, maybe play around with this a bit and make some modifications if you'd like uh, if not go ahead and go to the next section when you feel a little bored thanks and we'll see you in a little bit bye